Local businesses face lots of competition from big box stores and online retailers. In an attempt to bolster local business, the Senate Task Force on Strengthening Local Retail is touring the Commonwealth. They stopped on Cape Cod this week. Housing that's affordable, proper minimum wage, available startup funding, all barriers to a booming economy and all concerns raised by local business owners when the Senate Task Force on Strengthening Local Retail stopped on Cape Cod this week. A tour led by Cape and Island State Senator Julian Sear began in Harwich Monday. Senators toured local businesses, then hopped on a Cape Cod RTA bus to head to Hyannis for a listening session at Alberto's Restaurante. A hot topic, the gap between salary range and housing prices here on Cape Cod. Bottom line, what we've heard from almost every employer, I don't care what sector of the economy is, that the price of housing is a barrier. People can purchase and they want to purchase housing here for a second home or retirement home, and they're doing that with incomes earned elsewhere. So our incomes earned here don't always match with the housing prices. In our company, only about 2% of our jobs are actually require an advanced degree. So we are a company that really looks to train and promote from within. And again, we're, we're struggling with trying to find places for people to go and live. Um, so consider that when you're in your, in your meetings. High health care costs and housing costs aren't just um, high on Cape Cod. This is a problem all around the country. How we need to build up our downtowns. You know about the best practices of, you know, of sewering and having the downtowns have retail with residential above the retail with small apartments that are affordable and people walk to work. And that leads <coughs> to a cleaner environment um, where people are living and working in their downtown. A call was made to increase state funding to assist small businesses. Unfortunately, though, the funding that we get from the state to do this work, you've cut by 65% over the last three years. Uh, Senator Sear was successful with a great amendment to uh, restore that funding to the FY16 uh, levels. Uh, but when it came out of conference, um, the funds were actually below the FY17 uh, uh, level. And so um, I really appreciate your coming here, the tremendous interest that the leadership in the Senate has in the importance of, of retail uh, and our small businesses, and, and that's really the backbone to our local communities. But we can't provide the kind of support and help nurture those businesses without the state also giving us some resources to, to, to give those <laughs> businesses a jump start. When I moved over here in 93, I had an SBA 504. The only way I was to be able to do this business is with that loan. And today, if I want to get out, I can't because I have a lot of liability to my employees. I mean, I respect them, they've done a lot for us. But being able to sell to them would be a great thing. But they can't buy it because there's nobody making funding available for them. Senator Sear asked business owners to talk about minimum wage. But what I'm really curious from from our business owners here is around the minimum wage, and, and I hear two I hear two competing stories. Um, one that a lot of business businesses are paying um, above the minimum wage simply because that's the cost of living out here is so high. It's really difficult to retain uh, employees who are making uh, eleven dollars an hour, let alone fifteen or twenty dollars an hour. I think the working wage, you know, the the living wage on Cape Cod, I think, is closer to twenty six. Uh, dollars an hour. Right, well, what if you hire teenagers? Are we going to pay our teenagers $15 an hour to, to, you know, give out ice creams or sell ice creams or run and work in our hot dog truck or things like that? So in some cases, there are unintended consequences of all these things that I think are the biggest part that small business owners struggle with because it's not that we're not against, it's not that we're completely against them. I want to pay my employees more. None of my employees make minimum wage. But I don't want to be forced to, to be having to implement those things without, nobody helped us implement a time and time tracking system. Working on the smallest margin that I ever have been, just to keep the doors open and to employ people. Had there been an exemption for 14 to 18 year olds, I could have saved a little bit of money and taught these kids how to work. We talk about building an economy that works for everybody. Because if workers don't earn enough, they don't have money to spend in, in retail stores. If retailers don't earn enough, they can't give jobs to people. Like, we're all in this 
together. And so, I mean, that is the motive behind the referenda, even if it feels like it's coming at you in a negative way in some ways. I think we need to look at things that are a win-win, that are not a zero-sum game to make up for those things. And the task force is traveling around the state, gathering data in several different communities. They're expected to release a report on findings this summer.